of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. For all you do, this bus for you. Hello again, everyone. I'm Bob Kurtz. Along with Mike Galloway, we have a great evening of competition for you. Four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, monster trucks, and the Budweiser boss. There's a lot to look at tonight, Mike. It's going to be some good competition. Track's a little soft, but I think it's going to work real well. I believe the bite's going to be there. Good class of four-wheel drive modified trucks, some outstanding two-wheel drive trucks. A couple of them are going to be the top contenders here tonight. And then, of course, the Battle of the Monster Trucks. And we'll finish up with Gary Collins and when he comes storming with the Budweiser boss. Well, you talk about the Monster Trucks, the king of the Monster Trucks. Bigfoot is here. The foot's here, and it's a new one. It's just one they've just completed. It's got a lot of different changes in it. We'll talk about that a little later on. And a little bit about Gary Collins. Well, Gary Collins, the incredible Budweiser boss, the twin supercharged him. He's probably the most powerful four-wheel drive truck in America. He's tough, as always. And he'll roar down this 150-foot track here at the Hartford Civic Center. Sounds like a great evening, so stay with us. Bob Kurtz, Mike Galloway, Hartford Civic Center, all set to go now. Four-wheel drive competition. Our first contestant, critical condition. Mark Weeks is the driver. Canterbury, Connecticut, the hometown. Shotgun Hemi Ford, Bob, one of the motors that was outlawed a number of racing organizations. But as you know, there's no cubic inch limitation in this class. Let's see how he attacks the track. up shy of the 150 foot mark beautiful pull though one thing he did it might have got in the truck a little bit too early probably should have got a little momentum going before he mashed the motor down but it's a good hook i think they'll write that one down in the record books and we'll take it from there what kind of track are we talking about here tonight, Mike? Well, it's it's pretty soft, and that's why you need to roll with the sled a little bit. It's got a lot of moisture in it, but he's getting a good bite on it. Now, you notice going right on down, he's early in the class. It really helps. The track's in a lot better shape. He's got a good hook going for him. He's probably using about all the horsepower he can get. You see the dirt that's coming off the tires. He's getting hooked. He's not digging in a long ways, but he's hooked up pretty good, and I think that's generally about a real good pull for the critical condition. Well, we're in now we told you, just shy of 150 feet for critical condition. He measures in at 146.8. Here in Hartford, we get a lot of drivers, obviously, from the east with a chance to show off their trucks. We're looking at the ground pounder, Bob Hart from New Hampshire. This is a good running truck. Carbureted truck, it is tough. Again, near that 150-foot mark. Bob, about three times down there, he backed out of the throttle as he went down the track. And what he was doing, he was trying to slow the tires down just a little bit, let him get a hold of the track, let him get a, a little more bite. Now watch him, he, he's on it pretty hard right out of the hole. Start, breaks the tires loose and starts them spinning. Now he's hanging out the window, he's getting a real good idea of what the track's actually doing. Right in here, he backs out of it the first time, trying to slow the tires down just enough let him hook up on the track, and then he does it again a little bit later on. I think it was a good idea. He knew the tires were spinning, and it broke loose and wasn't hooked up quite like you wanted them to. When you back out of the throttle like that, a lot of times those tires will hook up and really rocket it on down. Talk about the track. Is the track get worse or better as we go along? Well, I think the track's going to deteriorate tonight because it's soft, and when you put it back together, I think you're going to see a lot of waves and dips in it. I think it'll be uneven surface as the night goes along. Budweiser measuring crew getting a measurement for us on the ground powder. What makes the track soft? Why is it soft? Well, it's a moisture. Of course, they've had, had a lot of snow and ice in this part of the United States over the last few weeks, and you can't get it all out. If you add a lot of lime in it, that'll dry it out and change it a lot. But I don't think that they could get all the moisture out of it. It makes it rut up a little bit. Well, the ground pounder comes in over 150 feet at 150 feet, one and a quarter inches, and he's the new leader. We're in the Hartford Civic Center here in Hartford, Connecticut. As we mentioned, it's the home of the National Hockey League Hartford Whalers. What's interesting is the configurations of the changes in the configurations they've made in this building. I think the fans sitting at home, the first thing they want to know, there's ice underneath here, right? Yeah, Bob, they don't take the ice out because of the refreezing time. 
What they do is they go in and lay plywood that covers the ice. And then they come in with visqueen, the thin plastic cover. That'll go all over the plywood and then come back with another fiber board on top of it that keeps any kind of oil or liquid getting down to the ice. And when they finish the competition, they'll take the dirt out and then take up all the plywood and the visqueen. The ice will be ready to go. Where does the dirt come from? And don't tell me outside. You pulled that out of me before. It's frozen. I mean, how do you get it soft? The dirt is stored in... Uh, Approximately a month before the show, they will take it into a building and let it set. And at that time, it'll start its thawing out period. And then when it comes in, it's still damp, and they'll add a lot of lime to it, Bob. They put a lot of lime in it for the drying agent, drives the track out, and makes it workable. And they have to get it out of here, obviously, when the show's over with. And right outside, immediately following the show, they'll have front-end loaders come in. They'll load it all on dump truck, go back into the storage for another year. Other changes here in Hartford Civic Center, they have left the boards in. Most of the arenas will take the boards in, so they get about a 10-foot gap between where the stands end and where the boards start. They've taken the plexiglass out and covered it. It's quite an operation. Talk about a lot of the Eastern drivers. Obviously, Gene Fanny Jr. is from the East Pennsylvania, but here's a truck that we see all over the United States, Mike. I love this truck. It's, it's one of my very, very favorites. Gene Fanny out of Deary, Pennsylvania, as we've said before, he drives one of these on the street and then has converted this one to a pulling one. But the color, still the Army green, but new paint job, no doubt. Under the hood, big horsepower, 512 Chevrolet, and he's really done well. This has been a good year for Gene Fanny and to go on the AWOL truck. He's a good driver, he's young, he's a professional puller. His, his grandmother and his aunt travel with him, and he is really tough. the boards and out the door. Bob Kurtz, there's the first full pull of the night. That's a full pull, and you know, he had a picture-perfect pull all the way out. He rolled, he mashed the throttle, the truck really hooked to the ground well. A beautiful job for Gene Fanny, and he's, he's already set the, the, the pace for a pull-off that'll be coming up. So gone Awald has surged to the lead with a full pull. Now, Bob, watch the top of the motor with the butterflies, the two round silver objects. Now, see, he's about, about three-quarter throttle, and there he's wide open on it. When he does that, the tires hook up extremely well. The truck has just launched right, and he is really just jerking it out the door. To all, in all honesty, a fine hook. That young man should be very proud of that Jeep. It's worked well for him. It's a wonderful job of maintaining it. Gone AWOL in the lead with a full pull. They're the biggest, most powerful monster trucks in the world. Unleashing their awesome power, the hottest new home video, Return of the Monster Trucks. It's raw action on the first monster truck obstacle course ever. With Bigfoot, USA 1, Monster Vet, Rolling Thunder, and more. Plus exciting side-by-side -side car crushing drag racing. Unbelievable truck crushing. See Awesome Kong crush a mobile home. If you like the original Battle of the Monster Trucks, you'll love Return of the Monster Trucks. You won't believe your eyes as these monsters of the Midway take to the water. And much, much more. You've got to experience experience the ultimate crushing power and thundering action in this all-new video. Return, Return of the Monster Trucks. Monster Trucks is not available in stores, so order yours today. It's dynamite. dynamite. Call now, 1-800-648-5600 to get your copy of Return of the Monster Trucks for just $19.95 plus shipping and handling. Order now and get a monster toy truck at no extra cost. This awesome video is available only through this special offer. So call now, 1-800-648-5600. Save CUD charges by using your Visa or MasterCard. Call now. beautiful truck. It's a 1988 Chevrolet, purchased brand new and converted into the pulling. Now the injection system we've seen, all of it has been facing the forward. Mike built this one himself. The injection is facing upward. It works real well. This truck is going to be real tough. He can definitely take it out. If he made it or not, he came close. It looked like he got a slow start. Well, I think he might admit to, to leave with a sled like that. I think he wanted to roll it a little bit and then get into it hard and really hook the tires up. Now watch him. Got it cut a little bit. He brings it out. He's just easing into it. 
easing into the throttle. Right there is when you see him open it up and go wide open. And when he does that, he hooks up on all four tires. It's a good hook all the way around. He's going to be close to the full pull mark. We'll have to wait on our officials to get the exact measurement. And it's an excellent pull for Mike. That big shovel is really hooking up hard. 572 cubic inch. Mike's a big boy. He handles a real tough truck. The shadow with a strong run. Well, Mike Slater, after they came back and did the measurement on it, has taken it out. We've got a tie. We're set for the pull-off, Bob. That mark on the track, 160 feet, which is a full pull here, we understand, at the Hartford Civic Center. Two trucks have done it so far as we look down the track from the far end towards the sled. All wild. This is probably one of the biggest cubic inch motors on hand tonight. It is, as a matter of fact, the largest cubic inch with a 604 cubic inch fuel injected Chevrolet. And Paul's been on the circuit for quite some time. He's a good puller. I've seen him hook a number of times and he's always there. Right now, the subject is can you dial in and get a hold of the track, get enough traction to propel it down to the end? Let's see what Bob does. Gone a wall has gone for the distance, and the shadow has pulled it 160 feet. Hog Wild has that in his sight. Slacks out of the chain, no jerk start. Look, what happens to Hog Wild? Look at the box, moving up on it. Good hook. Good well, some ease into it, and some just let her rip, and Hog Wild let her rip. He, he did, and it worked for him tonight, Bob. It, it did. He hooked up well. You know, it, it left good. I thought it was an extremely good pull for that truck. And as you mentioned, he doesn't waste any time right out of the hole. Just ease a little bit and then goes wide open. I mentioned here, Mike, at the, about the weight transfer. She doesn't know how, it doesn't matter how fast or how slow you go. Makes no difference if you could go 40 miles an hour or 4 miles an hour. That box will be in the same spot at the 160-foot mark no matter which speed you're at. Well, he misses by just one foot, five and a half inches of going the distance. So Hog Wild is now in third place. Missed the full pull, not by much. Well, we have four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, and exhibition competition all going on here at Hartford, Connecticut. And there's one family that has a vehicle in each one of them. Mike Galloway takes a look. Thanks, Bob. Well, I'm with Pam Bauman and Bob Bauman. And they drive a number of vehicles. Got three of them on hand tonight. You've got a four-wheel drive, a two-wheel drive, and then you've got an exhibition dragster. Keeps you fairly busy, doesn't it, Bob? Yes, it certainly does, keeping three of them clean and repaired. Ma'am, what about you? In the four-wheel drive, you've done rather well. You like it? I love it. How did you get involved with pulling? You've got all the vehicles now, and you've had to start somewhere. I started out with Yellow Fever, and I just, uh, they, uh, SRO come out with a two-wheel drive class. I decided to build a two-wheel drive, and then I liked the exhibition class, and I built a rail. Do you want to drive the rail, Pam? I would. You'd like that? Oh, yes, I would. What about the two-wheel drive, Bob? You've driven both of them. You've driven, driven the rail. There's a lot of difference in the competition, a lot of difference in the way you drive the two-wheel to the four-wheel. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. The, the uh, two-wheel drive has a much bigger motor, and you have to not get on the throttle quite as hard as you do the rail. Now, tonight on this track, is it going to be a situation where you ease the sled out of the hole and then go for the throttle? Definitely. You ease the sled out of the hole and gradually get into it, and then about 100 feet, get right on the throttle. We're going to watch these people. They're going to be very, very busy tonight. The Bauman. Yes, Another look truck we have seen at shows all over the country, Pontiac. Here in Hartford, Yellow Fever. Watch the truck body, Bob. A lot of them have flip-tops. Pam Bauman and her crew have put it on a scissor lip, lift the body completely up, clears the gap, and there sits Pam on the inside of the truck. Kind of like an elevator on the ride up. Very quaint setup, century oil and grease. Sponsorship on this truck, as, as many of the other Bauman pulling vehicles, and we talked earlier, they have three of them in competition. But Pam taking over the chores on the four-wheel drive, and I tell you what, she is excellent. She's got a good sense of the track, does a fine job of, of controlling the truck. She's always a competitor that the guys have to deal with. Spends a lot of time on the road. I know we saw her at the Indiana State Fair show last year in Indianapolis. Pam and Bob travel a, a, a tremendous amount, and they are in the busing business. They, they own and lease out school buses in the uh, Saxonburg area. 
A big injected Chevrolet motor. What kind of chance does she have of going the distance? I'd say Pam's got a good chance. 